CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery in nanophthalmos. This patient has a 15 millimeter axial length and an IO power of 63 diopters. Now, our guest surgeon here is Dr. Praveen Vyaware from India. And you can see those tiny eyes. This patient has nanophthalmos, chronic angle closure, status post YAG PI, on anti glaucoma meds, two pairs of pieces being made at the very beginning. A little bit of viscoelastic here. Be very careful here. Because in this case, you're going to get iris prolapse very easily. Here comes the main incision. I like the positioning of it. They're right at the limbal vessels and entering the AC. And there you go. Okay, cleanly done. Now, here's where you got to be very careful. This is the rexus marker. Just marking off a 5 millimeter zone. And you can see that's how big 5 millimeters is. So making your rexus right up against the pupil margin is 5 millimeters. So the white to white in the size, obviously very small. Now these nanophthalmic eyes are tough, so I like that he's using the side port, the paracentesis, to really get that rexus going here with the cystotome. This allows a lot more precision and control. You can also use 23 or 25 gauge forceps through a paracentesis. And again, you want to keep the AC formed and deep as you can. Oh boy, look at the Irish prolapse already. It's going to be tough. So we can put a little more viscolas again, but this is a tough case. It's going to be the whole case going to be like that. You can see the iris is going to want to prolapse. Now make sure you're not too tight on the speculum there. And also remember, this patient has a risk of what? Choroidal effusion, even choroidal hemorrhage. And you got to be very careful to avoid that. Now luckily this nucleus doesn't look too dense, so it should aspirate out reasonably easy. Just take your time here. There's no appropriate sulcus here. The sulcus here is very small, so you don't want to break that bag. You want this eye well to go right in the capsular bag. So be very cautious here. Take your time. Now, some surgeons like to make a little window to prevent choroidal effusion, make a little scleral window there. You don't necessarily have to do that. But again, this is a high-risk case. So now you can see the nucleus is out and being cautious here with that iris, very cautious. Now, it's prolapsing because there's obviously a little bit of a pressure gradient there. And so you can try to release some of that pressure, get that viscoelastic out. I think here, a bimanual cortex removal would be the easiest bimanual IA. And that iris may continue to prolapse. And that's just the nature of these cases. So you, in these cases, too, you got to set reasonable expectations for the patient. So he's checking, is the eye too firm? Is he getting a choroidal effusion or choroidal hemorrhage? So luckily not. And, but that's an important thing that he's checking. 15 millimeters is a tiny eye. Now, I'm going to ask you a quick question. What's hard to do the lens calcs? A tiny eye, 15 millimeter eye with a shallow AC or 15 millimeter eye with a deep AC? And the answer is with a deep AC. Why is that? Because the eye wall is even closer to the retina, so the eye wall power goes up dramatically. So here he's using a bimanual approach. I like that. He took a little break there, maybe didn't have the appropriate instruments at the time. And now a bimanual approach is going to make it a lot easier here. And so taking his time, what's he doing here? Looks like some anesthetic is going to go in in the subtenons space, maybe. And okay, we're going to do an additional procedure here. So yeah, subtenons block, it looks like, going back there. And now he's going to make a pars plana entry with the trocar. Now be very careful in the 15 millimeter eye. Where's pars plana? Pars plana may be very tiny. And how do you know you're not putting the trocar through the peripheral retina there? You better check carefully. When you're done, when you take the trocars out, you better look at that entry site with your indirect ophthalmoscope. So here we go. Now it looks like he's doing a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy to kind of deepen the AC to give himself a little bit more room to implant the lens, and sometimes that's needed. And so there's the trocar just staying in, and now he's completing the cortex removal. This is a very stressful case. Obviously, the video's edited. This case is going to take you a lot of time. That's okay. And when you're doing these patients, explain to the patient the difficult nature of their case. Now, in the U.S., we don't have readily available 63 diopter lens like he's going to plant in this eye. In the U.S., the highest we have that's FDA approved is a 40 diopter lens. That would be the Alcon SA60 series. And you can order that from Alcon. It's a single piece. And what I'd tell you, if you calculated out that this patient needed in the U.S.A. a 63 diopter lens, I just put in the max you got which is the 40, and we can go from there. This patient's not expecting a perfection outcome, and you really can't deliver that to them. So here comes the lens. This is a special order, not available in the USA, 63 Doppler lens. And again, this power can be all across the board. It's impossible to predict this patient's uh, post-op refractive outcome. This patient can be anywhere from 
a plus to minus to you know you don't even know where. I'd say the chance of hitting Plano in this eye, 10%. 90% chance you're not going to hit Plano. Despite whatever special magical formulas you've got. So getting that lens dialed in an appropriate position, again, a stressful case. And that 5 mm or 6 millimeter optic looks absolutely humongous in this tiny little eye. And so I like the single piece acrylic lenses because they are... Um, a lot more forgiving, and if with a tiny capsule bag, both those arms can kind of absorb or come in a little bit and keep that lens set. That looks like a nice outcome here. So very nice. Going to finish up the case here. Remember to check the entry site. you got to be very careful here. Let's look at a post-op picture too. And so then again, a little more cleaning up here. Make sure everything's absolutely watertight, and this page should have a very reasonable outcome. Perfection, no. Reasonable, yes. Very nicely done. Take that choker out and remember to check that retina. Very nice case. Thank you for submitting it. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. Cataractcoach.com. Check it out.